And with me, that roar of the crowd now is for the world heavyweight champion, the American dream, the people's choice, no question about it, Dusty Rhodes and John, we're going to see one heck of a match. Certainly are. He's gained that title on desire and determination. And I hope he keeps his cool tonight because this opponent is no one to fool with. A great big man with just about every move in the book. People don't realize that. This guy can go. He can indeed. And now the let's go to the ring. Uh, the referee uh, has been displaying the belt. Of course, we're ready to go in this World Heavyweight Championship match. The referee now beginning to check uh, both competitors. And uh, we're ready to uh, pick up the action, waiting for the bell to ring for this World Heavyweight Championship match between the Assassin number 1 and Dusty Rhodes, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. wrestlers as Johnny Valentine, Harley Race, Bobo Brazil, Chief Wild McDaniels, and others. Buckle your seatbelt, relax, and get ready to watch another card of exciting classic glory days of wrestling. <laughs> Jersey card later on in the program. A couple of nice takedowns there by Gino Bravo. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that this telecast is being brought to you by the authority of Capital Wrestling Corporation. And any rebroadcast or other use of this play-by-play -play description without the written consent of Capital Wrestling Corporation is prohibited. Bravo! in control. Bravo, shove, turn the rope. Nice shoulder block by Dino. Real powerhouse, this Bravo. Off this time, Russo waiting for him. Kick out by Bravo. And look at this. All over his back. Ooh, Russo laid it in there, but so did Bravo. Sweating profusely. Yank of the hair and sends Bravo to the canvas. The free Jack Lott sliding right down as if he were sliding into second base. Hey, Russo. Now Bravo makes his move. Slips out, shoves his man to the rope. Shoulder block knocks Bravo down. Russo trying it again. Bravo goes down to the canvas on his own power up. Oh, look at that. Around the end and a back body drop. And a knee lift sends him back down. Over for the count. Can't quite make it. Unfortunately, the referee was out of position for that count. Otherwise, uh, perhaps Bravo would have pinned Tony Russo.
Caruso. Hammering away, almost a will. A moment to go, but there you see Bravo picking up a head of steam. Russo now whips to the ropes off. Drop kick. He really nailed it. Russo's on his feet. Once again, whips to the ropes. This time, Bravo has him high in the air. Round and round. Look how fast Bravo swings his bat around. Throws it to the canvas. Covers him. Scoops the leg. One, two, and it's all over. and 28 seconds is the winner, Dino Bravo. Dino Bravo, a real powerhouse, a fine gentleman, a great athlete in every sense of the word. Now, let's take a look at a perfect patented drop kick by Bravo. Hurled to the rope from one side of the ring to the other. Bravo goes up, way up, almost above the head of Russo and just hammered Tony Russo to the canvas. In from there, J.B. Moore, and of course the airplane spin, Bravo spin. Everybody is well aware of the fact that it was Killer Brooks who was paid by Mr. Zabisco to gain the National Heavyweight Championship. That title was subsequently stripped from him by the president of the NWA, Mr. Bob Geigel. Now, of course, once again, a... Uh, 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 wait a second. Wait just a minute. Wrestling 2 has just moved into uh, Pistol Pez Watley's corner. And uh, chairs are being provided, and so, uh, Mr. All right, uh, a warning being issued by uh, Killer Brooks. Now, disconcerting uh, to his opponents. He uh, does a lot of talking and uh, before the match gets underway, but, uh, Mike, I know that uh, you would certainly concur with me that Zabisco has to be one of the most dangerous men in the ring. Without a doubt, and he has some excellent training, has a superb background, and the man can really uh, handle himself in the ring. I think, as he was alluding to in his interview, he always works at a man's disadvantage to a certain spot on a man's body to control the head, the arm, the legs and he works very successfully in the ring at that no question about it and it is uh pistol pez watley he's gonna have a hard time finding a weak spot on watley yes he is Watley has never looked better to me a man's in better shape and looks better uh, moving better than i have ever seen the man previously and i i think he's gonna win this match well he is a uh University of Tennessee Chattanooga, I believe. He was on the wrestling team there. Uh, had an outstanding uh, amateur background. And a tremendous uh, track man, too. Very fast. Well, a uh, standoff here between uh, Zabisco and uh, Watley at this particular point in time. Both men trying to gain the advantage. And uh, Killer Brooks officiating. And... Well, of course, we're very early on in the match, but I certainly can't find any issue at this point in time. Brooks appears to be uh, very intently uh, interested in what is going on and is watching very carefully. So far, Brooks has done a fine job. There's nothing controversial has occurred, and uh, Zabisco breaks it up very nicely. Watley. Very, very quick back in Japan. That's, that's correct, Gordon, and I think the fans have the opportunity to see a lot of outstanding wrestlers we have in uh, the Georgia Superstars program, including uh, Steve O, who I know is a, an old friend of yours, and uh, Terry Taylor, some outstanding athletes in that area, and I'm sure these fans will be looking forward to seeing them. Yeah, to say, uh, not, certainly not to omit uh, one Bill Dundee, either a tough, tough man. Without a doubt, one of the roughest, toughest, they call him Battling Bill, Superstar Bully. He's outstanding. Good move that time, and it is uh, Watley back on his feet once again, and so Zabisco. All right, uh, look back to the corner for wrestling two, and gets, uh, again, uh, perhaps a uh, small bit of stratagem, and it is uh, ah, a spin under takedown by uh, Zabisco, but Watley back on his feet very quickly. I have, in fact, I don't have one more question. Uh, someone that you used to work with has one more question. Do you ever think there could be a heel turn as good as when you turned on Bruno San Martino. <laughs> the human orchid. Yeah, Johnny, Mark Mero. I, yeah, Johnny, what a great guy he was. It's, it was a different time. It was a different era of humanity. When Bruno got, you know, if you start bleeding and fell down on the mat, people in the audience had heart attacks. I mean, there was few people that could have a heart attack and die. You'd see medics running up the aisles of the Madison Square Garden. 
<coughs> and people hated me. And the only reason they really hated me or other guys is because they really loved Bruno or really loved the good guys. And that was a different era. When I tell some stories to the young guys at the PC about how they, you know, people would get heart attacks when Bruno fell over and I was getting shot at and stabbed and riots and arena. They go, really? I mean, they find it hard to believe because today no one really loves anybody because no one really believes it. So it's just like one car wreck after another and more clothes. Like, I'm listening to the wrestling and they're saying the same shit stuff right now that I was saying in 1995. Wow, what a clothesline, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that was really the end of the old school. It was it marked the end of one era, and then the beginning of the next was the nationwide, you know, territory. Ah, there's the thing about Zabisco. He can explode from almost any angle. Absolutely, he's really pouring it on right now. Well, Brooks is cautioning him, and by the same token, when his man was down, Brooks got right down there. He was down there ready for the count. He wasn't uh, waiting and stalling. Fisco well, is a capable man in his own right. Don't ever forget it. Certainly no question about that, and it is... Uh... Fisco crashing down with the elbow, but Pez Wapley. Fisco Pez rolled away from it. Watley caught him. That was the inside of the fist, and then a, a good forearm across the back. Headbutt by Watley has the fist go back to the canvas once again in our crowd here at Super 17 Sports Arena. Really uh, getting with the uh, fiscal pass, Watley, as I think they. Ooh, nice drop kick. Got him coming off the ropes. And again, it was uh, Brooks down there very quickly for the count, Mike. Beautiful drop kick. Got him right square on the chin. And it, that's got Larry really, without a doubt, Larry Reilly. Zabisco fires back, however, and Zabisco tried to set him. It was uh, Watley with a backslide, and Zabisco powers out again before the count of three. The bell has rung, and Watley had him down again. The bell has rung. Beautiful match. That's meant to be Watley's match. He... He really had him going. He had one more fall. Well, it looks like... Uh, oh, my. He is actually holding up. He is giving the match to Larry Zabisco. Well, that is his discretion, but he has done it. And it is... Uh, well, I must say, I certainly thought that... Uh, Wrestling 2 is uh, just as upset, I believe, as Pistol Pass Watley is. Hey, man, you call that being fair? You call it being biased? Man, that's the most obscene thing I've ever seen in my life, Gordon. You know, let me tell you something. You know, life is a struggle. You ask any man, woman, or child out there if life is not a struggle. You ask this man right here if life hasn't been a struggle for him. You get where I'm coming from? I do indeed. For 8.30... John, you know that's a mistake. The at their advantage's request, the assassins are back in, and here we go. To go up against Wahoo McDaniels, a man that can chop harder than anyone in professional wrestling. And the tide has turned here. It doesn't work against Wahoo and Charlie Brown as Wahoo throws them chops. Off the rope, almost cut his head off. The other assassin runs into one. Snap Mayor takes the assassin down. Now Wahoo going after that mask. Wahoo chopping away. He's taking on both of them, David. He's got them both down. He's after Watch, that wait, mask. Paul Jones, great. Look at Jones, great foot, great 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 foot. Pulls Wahoo down on the mat, makes that tag. Chopping uh, at Wahoo. Look at Jones again. Look at the corner. Wait a minute. He, uh, can't see it. He's, I, you know he he's doing something up. over there with the other assassin. Now he comes in. Jones and the other assassin got together over there. Headbutt. Head Wahoo goes right down. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look, oh. John. The mask. The mask. And in, into the wait tights. I wonder if Jones was giving the assassin something that he had buttoned Wahoo and knocked him down. Hard knocked right him hand straight on down. The forehead of Wahoo. And he staggered his knees, buckled on that one. Again, they buckled. Another head butted. Wahoo goes down again. He's completely dazed. Look at him. Wahoo's down on that mat. 
Jones really nervous on the outside now. Wahoo taking them punches on the head. The assassin banging away on the head. Right, continuous right. Wahoo not giving up. John Wahoo never gives up. Remember when Greg Valentine broke his leg? The referee had to stop the match. He would not give up. He would not submit. And he has been hurt here. Evidently, there was something in that assassin's mask. Facing up and down. Wahoo. Wahoo. Fighting back. I told you, he doesn't give up. He will not give up. He gets the headbutt and drops to the mat again. They were slugging it out with each other. A knee right on that forehead. Once again, and they stop in the head. It looks as if Wahoo's head may be lacerated. That was a tremendous blow earlier in the match from the assassin. Not Wahoo down to just one maneuver. My assassin still pounding away at Wahoo. Wahoo trying to make it over there. Trying to make that catch. Charlie Brown takes on both men. Breaks him in the eyes. Comes across. Whips the assassin in into the his other corner. One. The both go down. Here's Charlie Brown from out of town. Yes, he is. Sleeper. Right. Charlie Brown has that sleep. He has it in tight. Our fans are going nuts. Looks tight. like the other assassin got him from the back. Stomping away at the head. All right, Wahoo. Wahoo. Yes, he comes in. Spins him around. Hard chop. And there's another chop by Wahoo. Now the, the other assassin's trying Hard to... Hard would him. knock him down. All four men in the ring. This is a Donnie Brook now. As again, Wahoo wails away and goes after that mask. And he's searching as if something is in that mask again. Wahoo trying to find out for himself. Looks like he's trying to tear it off. He's trying to just tear the mask off. Just about, he's just about got it off. You can see it. Charlie, Bro Charlie Brown after the other one. Again, down goes Wahoo. He's going to have to Jones. There's Jones in the ring. Now we got five in the ring. Wahoo cut off by Sasha, takes care of him, gives Jones one. A hard right by Charlie Brown. Double, Double. chop, down goes the, the assassin. Looks like his mask has been torn. Wahoo and Charlie Brown after that mask. Ripping away at that mask. The assassin finally gets out of the ring, and they run away. And away they go up the aisle, and this one is over. It's August 3rd, 2021. This is Bill Apter doing my the part of my job that I hate, uh, informing you of another death in the world of professional wrestling. This one, a veteran star, Jody Hamilton, who along with Tom Renesto formed the incredible, vicious mass tag team of the masked assassins. All over the territories, they wreaked havoc. Sounds like a magazine story that I'm writing, right? Um, I knew Jody very, very well. And his son is uh, the referee you always remember, remember from uh, uh, the evil referee on uh, WCW, Nick Patrick. And uh, uh, he had been posting for quite some time about that his dad has been uh, very ill and recently went into uh, hospice care. and. Uh, he wrote that uh, he was surrounded by family and the people he loves when he passed on. He was quite a guy to help uh, young wrestlers come up with uh, gimmicks, uh, teach them how to uh, work. He trained a lot of wrestlers and he was just an all-around uh, great guy and a masked assassin. Cover up. Well, let's do the match. I'm on. Okay. 
There is a bull whip that Nick Bockwinkle took into the ring, and now suddenly Stan the Lariat Hansen has taken oh. that away, and he has taken Bockwinkle outside of the ring and is hammering away on the three-time former heavyweight champion. Larry, Stan the Lariat Hansen, the wild man that he is from Borges, Texas. Going to work on Nick Bockwinkle, and Bockwinkle finds him with a boot. Come on, right Nick. In the center of the ring. Bockwinkle now takes him to the turnbuckle, bangs his head off that top turnbuckle right in front of us. Bockwinkle going to work with right hand, fists flying. Across the ring he goes. Up with the boot comes Stan the Lariat Hansen, and into the midsection of Nick Bockwinkle, and a snapmare on Bockwinkle, and now an elbow smash to the top of the head of Bockwinkle. This one is going to be war. It is going to be brutal. It is going to be a take no prisoners match. It's going to be the Repeated survival way. of the fittest before he was pulled off. And he continues his open, open warfare in the center of that ring. What an elbow smash. What an elbow smash taken by Bockwinkle. And then a boot. And then a snap there. And Bockwinkle tried to roll out of the way of this wild man from Texas, but did not quite make it. Two count. Come on, Nick, get out of there. That's right. Nick Bockwinkle working it around and now having a hammer lock on the champion. Yes, Stan the Lariat Hansen is the AWA heavyweight champion of the world. But Nick Bockwinkle has vowed that he will, he, Bockwinkle, will become the four-time champion of the world before this his one man is over. Across the ring. And now he comes up with that knee to the solar plexus. Again, the knee to the midsection. A right hand to the top of the head of Nick Bockwinkle. Reversal by Bockwinkle. And here is a sleeper hold by Nick Bockwinkle. The Bockwinkle sleeper. This could do it if Nick can keep him in the center of the ring. Very few get, no. Well, he's trying to make it to the rope. Stan Hansen knows that's what he's got to do. If Bockwinkle can get him back to the center of the ring, we very may well have a new heavyweight champion of the world, Rod. There you now. And now it is both of them onto the apron and onto the floor outside the ring. And is Hanson going to take Bockwinkle to the post? Bockwinkle trying to keep from getting there. He hammered him onto the steps instead. Dan the Larry and Hanson in a tirade outside the ring. And we thought Bockwinkle had him, but look at this man. He's not the champion for nothing. He's very, very tough, vicious, wild, brutal. Right out of the same mold as the Crusher, Dick the Bruiser, Gene Kaniski, they were all so intense as to be dangerous to anything that got close to them. And look at Stan Hansen. Absolutely, absolutely. And all of those adjectives that I use were putting it mildly. Hansen tries to take Bockwinkle to the post instead. He pays the price with three hard right hands to the face. Bockwinkle jabs to the body, to the head, takes a right hand, gives one back. To the forehead he goes, trying to bust the head of Stan the Lariat Hansen wide open. He hasn't made it yet. Bockwinkle setting his man up again, a hard right hand to the forehead. And now very quickly, Stan Hansen drops Bockwinkle onto oh. that top rope. I thought he was gonna drop him right in our lap. Hansen quickly on the cover, but getting a count of only one. Well, I'll tell you what, I am really impressed by both these men, especially Nick Bockwinkle. He is really determined out there, taking a pounding and coming right back for it. He wants that belt, he can taste it, and this may be his last shot. Please. Up and over, the suplex by Nick Bockwinkle on Stan Valeria Hanson. A quick cover, Steve Olsenowski with a count of two, about two and three corner. <laughs> I hadn't heard that before, but boy, it's true. Uh-oh. Stan Valeria Hansen saw what was coming, and now he has applied the backbreaker on Nick Bockwinkle. Bockwinkle only let the count go to one that time. Maybe he doesn't have the count of one in his sleep. I know Nick Bockwinkle is what. Here he goes. Turn Reversal. It okay, the back body drop. 303 pounds comes crashing to the canvas. A count of two. Oh. oh. These men, neither of them will have anything left after this one is over. Bockwinkle with a body slam. Bockwinkle with the cover. The count goes to two again. Nick Bockwinkle coming so close, but he can't quite put this big man for Texas. He goes it out, he gets hit. And now down goes Sam Valerian Hansen. He is covered, but Steve Olsenowski 
has taken a blow to the head. Nick Bockwinkel coming over to no, no. see to him, and Larry Hansen attacks him from behind. Bockwinkel whips across the ring. Bockwinkel now with a flying body slam. Come on, and the cover on Chandelaria and Hansen as Steve Olsenowski is trying to get it back. He's trying hard to get it back. And again, it is Chandelaria and Hansen from behind. And again, the referee, Steve Olsenowski, hits the deck. Well, I know what he feels like. He caught the foot directly in the temple, though. What a flying drop kick there by Bockwinkel. Chandelaria and Hansen out on his feet. Bachwinkle pile driver. This has put so many out of commission. There it is on Stan the Lariat Hanson. Bachwinkle turning him over, getting on top. But even without a count, Stan the Lariat Hanson instinctively kicks out. Steve Olzanowski caught that boot right in the temple. If you've ever been in the temple, you know how that can knock you silly. Bachwinkle over the top rope. Steve Olzanowski is on his feet now. I ain't going to call it. And this is a disqualification. It will be a disqualification, and Nick Bockwinkel is the winner, but he does not get the belt. There you see him on his hands and knees outside the ring as Stan the Larry and Hanson threw him up and over that top rope. Ready to make the introduction of a rare appearance by one of the Express. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the challenger to the heavyweight championship of the world, the pride of Huntsville, Alabama, beautiful Bobby Eaton. And the manager, Mr. Jim Cornett. Gentlemen, meet your boy, Rick title. It's obvious that it was not successful because you see the belt still around Flair's waist. We will give Bobby the credit that he is due. He is recognized as one of the great tag team wrestlers in the world. No question about it. We were interested to see he was how he would fare without a partner in the corner. And you've got to say to see Bobby he win the title. We'll keep that in the back of our mind as this match progresses. Ric Flair. Volumes have been written, thousands and thousands of words spoken about the talent of this man. But I think more eloquently than the words and the written words is the action to speak so loud for There is a little punctuation mark from the champion at the appropriate time. He thrilled Bobby Eaton. Beautiful Bobby looking down to see if he had a hole in his chest. Whoa, when this flare tees off, he really can Eaton going into a standing side headlock, but quickly Flair up top with a wrist lock. Bobby doubles it up. The champ back up on his feet. And they struggle. Robert Lee Eaton was an American professional wrestler. He is most famous for his work in tag teams, especially as one half of the Midnight Express. Under the management of Jim Cornette, he originally teamed with Dennis Condry and, later on, with Stan Lane. Professional wrestling legend Bobby Eaton passed away at the age of 62 this week. Between his time as one half of the Midnight Express, his decades of work in various NWA promotions, and his time in the Dangerous Alliance, Eaton is considered one of the greatest tag team and technical wrestlers of all time. Pro wrestlers across multiple generations, from Les Thatcher and Ric Flair all the way to Edge and Ewas Dax Harwood, took to social media early Thursday morning to mourn his passing. 
Orton won multiple tag team and singles championships during his career, wrestling through the 2010s with several promotions. Donna Eaton, his wife, died June 26 at the age of 57. He was widely regarded as one of the real-life nice guys in the business, and several current and former superstars expressed their condolences on social media. If you've studied pro wrestling with any true attention, you've studied Bobby Eaton. And understand just how special he was in the ring, said WWE superstar Adam Edge Copeland on Twitter. The floor, and you may have seen Bobby reach up and grab his ear. It wasn't from landing on it. It was from the pressure that Flair had put on with that side headlock. Another big shot. Eaton ever down the ring. Apron right into the post. Referee Nick Patrick trying to get the chance to stay back while the count goes on Eaton. Oh, wind him up. Pow! You can hear him coughing as Flair took the breath right out of him. Yes, sir. Champion. Uh-oh. Moves in after the two chops. Maybe a little too quickly. He thought possibly he had Bobby ready. He drove the head into the midsection. And now the momentum has shifted. Eaton with a hand full of hair, ripping the right hand while the referee pulling on the shoulder of Eaton. You just well make up your mind you're going against an extra man when Cornette is outside against you. Suplex Flair back to the center of the ring. Let's see the strategy. Figure four on his head, unable to get his submission. Bobby sails off that top rope. Drops the elbow down right at the neck. Hooks the leg. Count of one, two, we may know. He barely, can I tell you barely, got that shoulder off and just cleared it in time. Eaton again, sensing that each time Flair is losing some of that vitality of the jam. Rick Flair, quick to take advantage. Hips off. The champ wobbling and stumbling is still effective enough to turn the tide for the moment on Bobby East. Reverse, clear to the corner. Rick over, up, and nails Bobby right on the head. Can he sustain it? Oh, yeah. That was just as if he said, Yes, sir, you bet I could sustain it. A whip, Eaton, high back block. Bobby Eaton down as Rick Flair. He's picking up the feel of the audience. They're starting to bring him to a high right now as the champion. Stan Lane, 
makes an appearance. There he is. Big elbow. Flair is down. I don't know. And this can come from anywhere. And you said, oh, yes, but that's a disqualification. As Bobby no. came off the no. top rope with a knee, Rick Flair reached up and grabbed it. No. Takes him to the ropes and drops on him. He's going for the figure four. Lady jumps up on the ring apron. Jimmy Cornette up on the apron. He's stopped in by Flair. Look at the tail. Look at the tail wagon. He's going for that. Lady deep down in the center of the ring. Oh, I love it. Right back seven years in your face. involves four men. It's not a tag team bout, however, as all four men will be in the ring at the same time. First in front of me, from England, 235 pounds, the defending American anyway, champion, gentleman, Chris Adams. His teammate, the other half of the so-called dynamic duo, hails from Highland Park, 240 pounds, the Texas anyway, champion, Gino Hernandez. Across the ring, their opponent's brothers to the world's most famous wrestling family. First, at 240 pounds, Benton County, Kevin Von Erich. And his brother at 260 pounds, former world champion, Kerry Von Erich. All four in the ring at the same time, David Manning is your referee. All four men in the ring at once. A wild, wild match. The American champion, the Texas champion, and away we go! No bell is rung, but they're underway. Now the bell rings, and now we'll get it going. Everybody battling, everybody after. Gino in the corner. Gary has Chris Adams. Kevin was Gino. There goes Chris Adams flying out. Gary uh, put him away, and here comes the double kick. Uh, Gino and Anderson are both out of there. The Von Erichs rule the squared circle at Texas Stadium. And they're back now. We'll go back to the action. Of course, you know, last year was the biggest crowd ever on professional wrestling. World class championship last year at Texas Stadium. This year will be even greater. There goes Gino. Here comes Chris. And the battle is on as Kerry hammers on Gino. Chris and Kevin go after him. Chris Kevin in trouble now. Kerry trying to shake off the effects of Gino and Andy. And there goes Kerry. Out of the table, out of the floor. And he got Kerry all wrapped up and over. Chris. And Gino on top of Kevin Bonner. Can I got to do it again? But look out. Here's Kerry. And Kerry gets in the way. And Chris Adams is being hammered now by Kerry Bonner. Meanwhile, Gino's trying to pick up on Kevin Bonner. A miss. A miss. A hard right hand that Kerry and Chris Adams had. Another one. And Adams fights back. Adams. Trying to put a pin on Kerry, one, two, but not enough, and he catapults him over the ropes. You know what I mean, says Kevin Von Erich wrapped up. You know, one of the great things about that Texas Stadium of Hell's going to make it. Kerry breaks it. Chris is caught. Chris has a kick. And Kerry Von Erich. Coming back to take charge now of Chris Adams. Gino misses on a charge into Kevin. Now Chris Adams with a body slam on Kerry on the floor. Look out. Chris says it. Steps on the far side and David Manning trying to stop it. Chris 
Oh, this one's almost too wild. Chris on the mat. Chris back in the ring, and here comes Kerry. Meanwhile, Kevin has the abdominal claw. The iron claw on Gio Hanley. Now the claw on the other side of the ring on Chris Adams. Both Von Erich with the claw. Kerry Von Erich trying to put the claw back on Chris Adams. And Kevin revived now. He's coming back on Gino. A wild, wild bout on world-class championship wrestling. And they cross. Kevin went over to Chris Adams. Gary Von Erich goes back to the abdominal claw on Gino Hernandez. Chris Adams makes it out of the ring under the ropes. It looks like Kerry has lost his on uh, Gino Hernandez. And now Gino takes after Kevin Von Erich. Kerry comes back. Kerry goes out. And now Gino controls the loose as the battle is on the other side of the ring with Kevin and Chris. with Gino. Carey's back with Chris. And Carey. The right hand off Chris Adams. Another one, Chris Adams. A right uppercut. Another one by Chris Adams. Kevin about Eric having a problem. I was talking about here's a suplex. On Carey at a count. One, two, and not quite three. Kevin's over on Chris Adams. Now Gino comes over to pick up on Gary Von Erich. What a wild one. What a wild one. These four young men. Four of the world of wrestling's best. And another sleep hole by Gino Hernandez. You know, this is wild. But can you imagine the excitement of two rings at Texas Stadium? The 10 mile back with a prize of $100,000 going to the winning team. And, of course, that world title match with Kevin Von Erich and Ric Flair. Now, Kerry has the claw, the iron claw on Gino Hernandez. But Chris Adams breaks out. He and Kevin Von Erich flailing away. Over the top rope. Kevin Von Erich not quite out. He's in. Kevin's back. Rolls up Chris. Got him all rolled up. I think David Manning has disqualified Chris Adams for rolling. And we'll wait for the official word here. And now the belt going after the Von Erich, losing those championship belts. Chris Adams hitting on Terry Von Erich. Gino Hernandez after Kevin Von Erich. And now the two with the belt. Lee, the bell is ringing. And finally, David Manning has some order in the ring. The winner is Kevin Von Erich. Chris Adams tossing him over the top rope.
gesticulating wildly at ringside, and Rhodes catches him. He is actually gaining strength from this crowd that has come to support him. And as you said before, that's what led him to the title, the people. That's where he gains the strength and has a desire and ability to go on. People, people just come within him. Actually, the sense he's not just fighting Dusty Rhodes in there, he's fighting this moment. He is literally fighting thousands of people at one time, and the assassin is down. The assassin down and Rhodes down. Flash is down, and panic elbow across the chest of the assassin. The assassin instinctively going over toward his stomach. And that indicates, obviously, is some great uh, amateur training because, uh, as you know, you can't get pinned if you're on your stomach, and that's exactly what he did through instinct. And now, it's hard to tell. Both men may be lacerated, or perhaps it's only Rhodes. But uh, certainly, this is turning into a, uh, a different dimension for a world heavyweight championship match and Dusty Rhodes, weary, beleaguered, now again pushes the referee to one side and he's caught coming in by the assassin, the assassin, this is now Rhodes retaliating, the series of singing left hand, he unforced the right to put the assassin back to the camera, and the assassin shaking his head, those cobwebs are thick now, Rhodes arm whips him off the ropes, Rhodes catches him with an elbow coming off the ropes, another elbow down coming off the road. Down. Oh, caught the referee. The referee bending over the assassin. And it is uh, Rhodes who caught the referee. Rhodes has him now, and he's after the mask. He's after the mask, and the referee is out. The assassin catches him with an elbow, drives a fist into the head of Dusty Rhodes. Rhodes took a hard blow into the solar plexus. That set him up for that fist right into the head. And the assassin calling for the count, but that referee is out of it. No question about it. The referee is out of it. And the assassin now trying to wake up the referee. The assassin trying to bring the referee to. And now, wait a minute. checking the referee and working on him. And the assassin saying, no, no, get back over here. And Dusty Rhodes slowly coming back to his feet. Rhodes on his knees. And it is Rhodes hanging on now. Hanging, wait a second. He went into the trunks of the assassin and he got something. He caught the assassin. Championship. And that 
satisfies the people here, no question about it. They're happy that uh, their beloved Dusty Rhodes is still the world heavyweight champion. But I can feel very strongly, John, that the situation between the assassin and Dusty Rhodes is a long way from being over. Well, this just looks like beginning. This, this is such a hot issue between these two gentlemen. I just wouldn't want to be between them if they met on the outside. So. Amen to that. And hey, we'll be back in just a moment. Well, that's some exciting wrestling, my wrestling fans. Please continue to join me as I present only the very finest in wrestlers and wrestling of the 70s and the early 80s. This is Willie J signing off from the glory days of pro wrestling. Fuck him, the feet on our body.